If you were going to decorate your bathroom, you wouldn't just go and get the decorating tool, would you? You'd go and get various tools, such as paint brushes of different sizes, you'd have sandpaper, a scraper, paint stirrer, and all that kind of good stuff, and you'd use them together to get your bathroom looking the way you want it to. And it's exactly the same with the selection tools. In fact, it's the same with all of Photoshop, and I wish, Photoshop, and I wish I'd thought of that analogy when I first introduced it to you, but hey-ho. The selection tool is one of the most powerful things about Photoshop because they allow you to select an area of an image, make changes to it without affecting the rest of that image. Now the selection tools all live <coughs> in this area of the tool palette and there are three main ones. We've got these marquee tools, there are lasso tools and this little baby here called the magic wand tool. Now I don't know if you noticed that as I click between them, this area of Photoshop up here, up there, changes because there are different options available for each of the selection tools. I'm not going to go in depth into all of those options because this film will be three hours long. However, I will have to use some of them to kind of show you how you'd use these in the real world. There is also a selection menu up here, select, and there are one or two options there that you can use, sorry, to, uh, change your selections. Again, we're just going to look at the basics of getting you going with selection and you can explore these yourself. If you get a bit stuck, you can always go into the help menu. Photoshop help is absolutely brilliant. Just type in whatever it is you're looking for and it will give you all sorts of really useful information and step-by-step -step stuff on how to use those and what they're for. I still go into it from time to time because Photoshop is vast, you know, and there's things you might not use all the time and need to refresh your memory. I've just made an empty black document here just so I can show you the tools. Now as with everything in Photoshop, wherever you see that little tiny, if you can see in the corner of that button, there's a little black triangle. That means if you click and hold down the mouse button, there are options available in there. These are the marquee tools. They're rectangular, elliptical, single row marquee and single column marquee. The rectangular marquee tool means that Wherever I click and drag, I'm making a rectangular shape selection and I can make it whatever size I choose to do so. The little marching ants say that that area of your picture is selected. And if I want to move the selection a bit, I just click in it and I can move it anywhere I like. To get rid of a selection, you can go select, deselect, or use control D on the keyboard. The elliptical marquee tool is much the same as I'm sure you've guessed, only it is an elliptical or circular shape. The single row and single column, if you, let's use single row, wherever I click, it will choose that precise row of pixels and select them. You can't even, I don't know why it's not doing it. There's something weird going on, but I'm not gonna go on about that because I have never used those tools ever in my life. I've no really idea what they could be used for. Oh, I've just thought of something I could use it for, but never mind. we're not gonna talk about it. There's plenty of other good stuff in here that we can look at. The lasso tools, there are three options here. This is the freehand lasso tool. This means that you can draw around something freehand. So let's imagine that I've got somebody here, uh, a head and shoulders shot of somebody, and I wanted to draw around their head and shoulders um, to select them, something like that, and then hopefully they'd go off to the doctor and ask for surgery because they're a very, very odd shape indeed. But you can freehand draw around things using the freehand lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool means that if you have, it's very, very useful for something with a hard edge and a defined straight edge shape, you can just click and you see the cursor has changed to see, say that, um, you know, I'm starting to do something. And then wherever I go to and click again, it's made a line. So I could trace around the edge of a, I don't know, a shed or a house or something, just clicking where the direction changes to select it. And when I want to join it up, I just put my cursor where the two lines meet, it changes, click, and I have made a selection. The third one here is the magic wand tool. This is a very, very useful tool because it just chooses a specific area of color. If I just get the paint bucket and make that red and deselect it, go back to the magic wand tool. If I click in the black area, Notice it selects all the black. You see there's a little line of marching ants going around the outside. Deselect it. If I click in the red area, the marching ants around the outside have disappeared because I've only selected 
the red bit. Very, very useful for choosing or selecting blocks of colour. Now, this, the different options which go on along here, we can tweak the different uh, selections. So let's just have a quick look at those. We have feathering. This is how much your selection feathers, how soft the edge of your selection is. If you have a very hard defined edge where there's lots of contrast, you might not want much feathering. If it's something softer, then it, where it sort of blends into what you're selecting it from, then you'd want a greater amount of feathering. There's no right or wrong with how much feathering to use. It is something you need to go and play with. And as you sort of, you know, you can do it. And if it doesn't work, well, you can always go back to your history palette here and work your way backwards to the point where it was okay. And then continue again. You have to play with those for yourself to learn how to use them. But that's what feathering is. Just deselect that. <clears throat> In the lasso tools, we've still got feathering. We also have something here called anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is a bit like feathering. It, it's kind of how it blends the color of one pixel that you've selected into the pixel next to it so that it doesn't jar quite so harshly. It's not something you really see with your eye, but it's something you may notice overall. It's very hard to see the difference between aliased and anti-aliased. I would just say leave it ticked because it, it should, in theory, make things a bit better. The magnetic lasso tool is a brilliant piece of sort of free, it's a combination of freehand and snap to. Um, the only way to describe it is to show you how it works. Now, according to these different options here, I can set up how big my brush is. But if I wanted to select this red area, I can just click anywhere on it and my cursor changes. Now, all I have to do is just run around the edge and so long as I'm somewhere close to it, I've got that outer circle over what I'm trying to select. Photoshop is selecting it. Look, I don't know if you can see that, the little cursor point is actually out over the black, but it's still selecting the red area. This is really great for selecting a hard edge shape and doing it very quickly and very efficiently. Now there are various options here and we'll look at those options when we come to actually do something for real. I want to just talk to you about feathering briefly before we go any further. Let's just bring up a rectangular selection. Here we go. Now I could set the feathering up here before I begin the selection. If I try and type something in there now, it doesn't actually affect the selection. It might do on later versions of Photoshop. Let's put it back to zero. But if I right click in my selection, I have the option to feather here. I choose that and I can say I want to feather the edge. So let's say I'm going to make that edge 40 pixels and click OK. Watch the selection change. There we go. You see that it's no longer got hard corners. That's because it's now feathering 40 pixels, either 20 pixels either side of that line and fading the selection in. If I chuck some red in there, you'll see it's kind of fading in. It's got a soft edge rather than the hard edge of this weird shape over here. If you're going to use the magnetic lasso tool to select that soft edge, you have to do settings accordingly. I'm not going to worry about the feathering on this one particularly, but the width of the brush, I would say is 60 is still good for that. Edge contrast. The more contrasty the edge is, the higher you set that number, it's best for a high edge contrast. Sorry, um, the lower you, yeah, the higher you set that number, sorry, I'm going mad. The higher you set that number, best for a hard edge. The lower you set that number is best for a soft edge. So if I set that to one. Frequency, this is how often it puts those little dots, how often it sort of snaps and goes to look for the edge of whatever it is you're going to select. If you have a high, um, sorry, frequency number, let's go to 50. If I try and select this, the magnetic tool might struggle a bit. There we go. You see it's, it's struggling to find the edges. And so it hasn't really managed to select it at all well. If I tell it uh, to put in lots of points, then it will snap more quickly and look for it. And if I put in a higher number here, hopefully it should do a much better job of finding that selection. There we go. Clever old stuff, eh?